In this video, we'll be talking about the circulatory system in earthworm. In earthworms, circulatory system is closed type. That means the blood remains confined in the blood vessels. And all the blood that flows into a network of blood vessels. So there are many blood vessels which are there. So when we want to talk about all different blood vessels, we would be talking about the lateral view so that we are able to see all the vessels. So if we see the earthworm and if we draw the elementary canal, this becomes the first segment which has mouth. So this is the mouth, it leads into buccal cavity, then there is a pharyngeal part, then esophagus, gizzard. We are just drawing this elementary canal so that we are able to correlate with all the blood vessels which are there and their supply. Then there is this intestine which is going to run till the end, till the last segment. So this is the elementary canal that we have drawn. Now there is a blood vessel which is on the dorsal side. That means above the elementary canal. If we see the worm like this, the top side is called the dorsal side. So above the elementary canal, there is a dorsal vessel. Dorsal vessel runs from the posterior side and comes towards the anterior side. So it is going to be coming from the posterior side up to the anterior side. So I'm going to draw this dorsal vessel and it is one major blood vessel. This is the dorsal blood vessel. Let us label this dorsal blood vessel. Dorsal blood vessel. Now we will also talk about the special features of this blood vessel. This blood vessel is contractile. That means it is going to show contractions. It is valvular. That means it has valves and it actually helps in the conduction of blood from the posterior to the anterior side. So contractions are from posterior to anterior side. That means it is going to bring the blood from the posterior side and supply to the anterior part. In the first two, three segments, that is in the second one, third, this is how it is formed. There are three branches which actually join to form this vessel. And the direction is going to be like this. That is posterior to anterior. And this is the dorsum. It has valves. Now where are these valves present? Suppose we draw the segments here. And we are not drawing the complete segments. So if these are the segments which are there. And we are going to number because we have to mention there are, there are certain other blood vessels which are in particular segments only. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So these many segments are okay. So now here, where are the walls? As soon as this segment is crossed, just after the segment, there is a wall. Again, this is the segment. So just after the segment, there is a wall. Walls prevent backward flow or we can say that they maintain the blood flow in only one direction or we can say that walls help in unidirectional flow of blood. In the fourth, fifth and sixth segments there are blood glands. So these are called the blood glands glands. Now what is the function of these blood glands? The blood glands they see, they produce cells and they also produce hemoglobin. The cells are phagocytic cells 
En hemoglobin is dissolved in plasma. In case of earthworm, hemoglobin is dissolved in plasma. In other organisms like human beings, hemoglobin is in RBC. So here the cells which are there, they are not responsible for this transport of oxygen. The cells are phagocytic in nature and these cells and hemoglobin, they are produced by these blood glands which are found in 4th, 5th and 6th segment. Let us come to the other main blood vessel which is on the ventral side. As we said, if we see the top side that becomes the dorsal, so the lower one will become the ventral. So this blood vessel is mid-dorsal and the lower one is going to be mid-ventral. Mid-ventral starts from the second segment and it goes up to the last segment. And as it is on the ventral side, we call it ventral blood vessel or sometimes only ventral vessel. Ventral vessel is non-contractile. That means it is not going to show those kind of contractions and it is non-valvular. That means there are no valves either. So, and the Direction in which the blood is going to flow is antero or anterior side to posterior. So in this case, the blood is going to flow in this direction that is from anterior to posterior. There are two more blood vessels. One blood vessel which is present on the dorsal side itself and it is only between 9th and 13th segments. So again I'm going to draw it here. The blood vessel is from 9th to 13th segment. So this is a blood vessel here. There is one more blood vessel which is on the ventral side and not exactly on the ventral side it is on the lateral side and they are in pairs. So if this is the worm Upper side becomes dorsal, lower side becomes the ventral. So this side would become the lateral side. So if we draw on the lateral side, it's going to come somewhere here. So I'm going to draw it on the elementary canal. And this starts from the first uh, segment, goes up to 13th segment. And it is in pair. So let us start from here. This blood vessel is on the lateral side and they are pairs. So we are drawing only one on this side, other one is on the other side. And after 13th segment, it bifurcates into these two branches which are going to go further. Now let us name them. The blood vessel which is from 9th to 13th segment is known as supraesophageal vessel and these ones are known as lateral esophageal vessels. So this is a pair and the, this one is single. Now, how are these blood vessels connected? The blood vessels are connected by slightly wider vessels. These wider vessels are either written as aorta or aortic arches or sometimes they are also termed as heart. Actually, they are not like heart but they are just helping in connecting the dorsal and the ventral vessels. So, let us talk about these connections here. The connections are one in the seventh segment. So in the seventh segment, there is a wider vessel which is going to connect. And I'm going to erase the things which are inside. So this is the connection and let me erase this part. So this is a wider vessel which is connecting the dorsal one to the ventral one. 
This is, this one is in the seventh segment. This is the seventh segment. Let us complete this. In the seventh segment, we have shown one. Let us make one more, which is in the ninth segment. So in the ninth one also, we will draw this slightly wider vessel, which is going up to the ventral. So here again, we are going to erase the things which are inside. These two, that means this one and this one, they are known as lateral hearts. And the function is that they help in connecting the dorsal vessel to the ventral vessel. Now let us draw two more which are present in the 12th and the 13th segments. But there is a slight difference. Let me draw the one which is in the 12th segment. This one is a wide vessel. It is, it is going to connect the dorsal to the ventral. But at the same time, it helps in connecting the supraesophageal to the ventral. So if you can see this, we have shown two connections here. Or let me make it slightly thinner. The two connections. One connection is of the dorsal one. The dorsal is connected here to the ventral one and the supraesophageal is also connected to the ventral one. Similar is the one which is present in the 13th segment. So again, let us make this connection here and one connection coming from the segment. And this goes up to the ventral. So here also we see that these two structures, they connect, these two structures, they want to connect dorsal to ventral and supraesophageal also to the ventral. So these two structures, they are known as lateral esophageal hearts. Lateral esophageal hearts. Now there are many more connections. Later on, after 15 segments, there are many thin vessels which are connecting the dorsal and the ventral vessels. These are known as commissures and there are many such connections. So this is also one connection. These are called commissures. The basic thing is they help in connecting the dorsal and the ventral. Now in ninth and tenth segment, we find few more connections. But these connections are only between the supra and the lateral esophageal. So supraesophageal is connected to the lateral. These are known as the anterior loops. They are called anterior loops. So there are many such connections which are there. The dorsal vessel produces many branches and it supplies blood to the anterior part of the elementary canal. As we said in the beginning that the circulatory system in our thumb is a closed type and it has a network of blood vessels. So basically there are two main vessels, one is dorsal, other is ventral and there are some connections between the dorsal and the ventral and they are generally termed as hearts though they are not the real hearts. Some places they are also written as aorta and the main function is connection. The blood glands are going to produce cells as well as hemoglobin. So this is how the circulation takes place and hemoglobin is dissolved in plasma. It is not in RBCs. So as we can see this diagram, it is a complete network of 
the blood vessels through which the blood is transported. Exchange of gases takes place through the skin and from the skin oxygen which diffuses in would be taken by hemoglobin which is present in plasma. So the blood vessels, their names and their locations plus from which segment to which segment and the direction. These are the important things that we have to remember. Now in the next part, we'll take up another system.